is, is sometimes we might think of like a hardening or a rusting, some kind of corrosion, a weakening or sand in the gears of a machine. That's what calcification is. Is it like stones? Stones. It's stone formations in the body. Like kind of like barnacles on a ship. These little stony buildups that build up in our joints, that build up in our, our tissues, that build up underneath the skin, right? That build up in our eyes, in our gallstone or our gallbladder, in our kidneys, in our heart, in our lungs, right? In our, you know, our spinal column, for example. So you see, like, you can kind of, like, translate, we've all heard of some kind of degenerative condition in the brain, in the pineal gland, mm-hmm. right? A calcified pineal, by the way, is everyone here kind of aware of your pineal gland? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Your pineal gland, just real quick aside on that, is basically um, Rene Descartes, the famous scientist, um, actually termed your pineal gland in the 1800s as the seat of the soul. Which is basically, it sits right back here in the middle of your right and your left hemispheres of your brain. And acts as a mediator for a lot of the neurological connections going between your right, which is more of your innovative, creative, imaginative qualities. So to speak, and then your left is more of your like structure, analytical, abacus, like calculation type of brain, right? And most of society, if we were to use that reference, is a little more left. And also, is is definitely has a calcification in their pineal gland, and that has a lot to do with something called fluoridosis, mm-hmm. which is um, basically fluoride saturation in your pineal. And your pineal gland actually stimulates a lot of the neurotransmitters. Um, it helps with the production of you know things like serotonin, for example, uh, dimethyltryptamine, melatonin. Right, these kind of things that we might have heard about, mm-hmm. um, and in, and the suppression of the faculties of your pineal gland actually uh, just basically create a more docile individual. If you want to just like chunk it down, right? And this was found out um, actually in Germany mm-hmm. because a certain mm-hmm. camp of individuals actually unloaded um, fluoride in the water supply of inhabitants that were in Auschwitz. Mm -hmm. Right? You guys know about that? Mm -hmm. That's where it first actually came out. And actually Stalin was known to actually utilize this as well, to create more docile population. Mm -hmm. So then you start to wonder, like, well, why is it in our water supply? And they, and we kind of forgot all about that, right? This is what we do in the West. I don't know about the rest of the world, but this is what we do. We forget things very quickly. Mm-hmm. I've noticed this over the years, and I wasn't even alive back then. And we forget history very quickly, because it seems like as history goes on, there's someone with a broom and a broom sweeping it away. right? And the only way you could get away with something like that is if you had a population of people that lost certain innovative factors or certain... Um, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Empowered, yeah, willpower, empowerment, right? Mm -hmm. So this has actually been directly correlated with your pineal gland. And what happens is that when it gets fluoridated, (coughs) it's called pineal calcification. Basically, it gets rusted. Now, you can reverse this. You can totally reverse this. And this is actually the way you do with the pineal gland is the same way you do with every other calcification condition more than just that. I don't want to leave this conversation with just the just the notion that it's just like over accumulation of calcium or it's just bad calcium and I will we will talk about how you break that down in the body step by step, right? Alkalinity has a lot to do with it because the organisms that actually breed and uh, respire or or sustain themselves in a certain environment, it's actually an acidic environment. So they sustain themselves in what's called an anaerobic environment, which is oxygen depleted. So when you, your body is deoxygenated, meaning that you're actually, you have more of a, sh- there's more of a sugar metabolism. This has a lot to do with candida, has a lot to do with bacterial conditions, all kinds of like microbial conditions like that, is that these organisms, like cancer by the way, feed on sugar, right? 
Cancer cells are said to have 13 more receptor sites for sugar than healthy oxygen respiring cells. And normally, your body in an alkaline state or a mostly alkaline state respires off oxygen. This was found out in 1931 by a Nobel Peace Prize winner called Otto Warburg, Dr. Otto Warburg. And basically what he found out was that cancer thrives on sugar. Right now, what's cancer? Cancer is uh, cancer's another long subject, but really cancer is not that complicated. It's just we, we have heard of so much cockamamie stuff about it that we overcomplicate it. It's, very, it's really somewhat simple if you understand the mechanisms for its own growth. Um, but again, calcification has been rooted behind every major cancer. There's a calcification condition behind it all. So, if you, so you don't necessarily need to know the ins and outs of all these conditions, but if you know the mechanisms for deconstructing these stone-like formations in the, 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 the organisms that are using the calcium as armor to shield from your immune system, then you start to, might start to think like, oh, interesting, okay. Now I'm starting to see the puzzles because it, it, it's, a, it's a puzzle. Really, like this whole, this whole, everything we're talking about, especially this calcium theory, which is, is strictly a theory. The theory is that we need more calcium in order to create strong bones. That's the theory, if you're wondering, well, what's this calcium theory? That's the one. We need to drink milk because it has calcium, right? And what does calcium do? Calcium builds bones. Now, the reality is a little different than the theory. Right? The reality is actually your bones aren't made of calcium. Calcium's a big part of your bones, but it's not made of calcium. Your bones are made of magnesium, of silica, of calcium, of boron, of manganese, of zinc, right? And probably a whole bunch of other stuff too. But for some reason we just like, oh, it's calcium. You know, and I won't go into my conspiratory ideas around that. Obviously the dairy industry has uh, definitely used that for a while. Same thing as the vitamin D. By the way, vitamin D does have a lot to do with calcium though. Just, just so you know, calcium doesn't absorb into your, to your bones unless there's vitamin D present. And if you have a vitamin D deficiency, calcium can get stuck. Which may actually lead you to wonder, like, well, maybe calcification has a lot to do with vitamin D deficiencies. Hmm. Maybe. Who knows?